All right, so listen, guys, today we are starting 9.2. We're talking about areas of circles. Last week we did circumference, and today we're going to move on to area. The first thing I want to do is talk to you about some things that I want you to remember from last week that we talked about in 9.1. Let's see how many of you can remember this. First up, class, what is the distance from the center to any point on the circle? Radius. All right, so if you look down here at my circle, from here to the edge, that is called a radius. This is not in your notes, so you don't need to write it down, so go ahead and put your pencils down, but we're just reviewing. On Monday of next week, we do have a quiz, and you will need to know all of these review questions I'm asking you. Next up, what is the distance across a circle through the center called? Diameter. diameter. That is the diameter. So this from right here all the way across, that is called our diameter. Next up, what about the distance around it? What's that called? Perimeter. Perimeter, perimeter is of any uh, object, but what is it called when it's the perimeter of a circle? Area. Circumference. Circumference. Circumference is basically like a perimeter, but it's the distance around a circle. Next up, there are two formulas for circumference. One of them has to do with radius, and one of them has to do with diameter. Raise your hand if you remember one. Noah, what's one of them? 3.14. Incorrect. What's a formula for oh. circumference? No, I don't know. <laughs> Does anybody know? Maddie. C equals, equals 2 R pi? Very close. C equals 2 pi R. Everyone say that. C equals 2 pi R. Now there's another one, if I had the diameter, what would that one be, Zarya? C equals pi times r. Not pi times r. No. Pi times d for diameter, okay? Now, Noah, this is what I think you were thinking before. What's one of the values for pi, what would you say? 3.14. Does anyone remember what the fraction one was? Sarah, what was it? What was it? 22 over 7, okay? So this information right here, although it's not in your notes for today, it was from 9.1, and you do need to know this for your quiz. Now today I'm going to teach you another formula that we want to have memorized. Okay, so for these, there's a formula for a circle and for a semicircle. Repeat after me. A equals pi r squared. A equals pi r squared. Okay, so that means you are multiplying pi times r squared. Now, if you notice, this right here is a circle. What is the difference between a circle and a semicircle? A semicircle, semicircle is half of a circle. A semicircle is half of a circle. So if you look right here, this says a equals pi r squared. This says a equals pi r squared, but then it divides it by 2. All you have to do for a semicircle is simply cut it in half or divide it by 2. Now, if you notice down here, pi is 3.14 or 22 over 7. Right next to it with your red pen, I want you to write a little squiggle with two lines coming down. That is what pi looks like. All right, so these formulas are other formulas you want to go ahead and make sure that you are memorizing for your quiz and test next week. Let's go ahead and use these formulas today for problem number one. It asks us to find the area of the circle and to use 22 divided by 7 for pi, round to the nearest tenth. Looking at problem A, has it given me the radius or the diameter? Radius. It has given us the radius. So I want you to go ahead and write R equals 7 centimeters. Tonight when you come to your homework and you have an original problem that looks like this, you do not have to draw the circle and stick the radius in there. All I need you to do is simply start off the original problem by writing whether it's the radius or the diameter. Now we're going to use our brand new formula for the area of a circle. Class, read to me what the area of a circle formula is. R equals 7 cm. A equals pi r times 2. We just wrote it in red. It's not A equals pi r times 2. It's A equals pi r squared. Everyone say that again. A equals pi r squared. Once again, it's really important for you to memorize that. So I want us to go ahead each and every time we are going to go ahead and write down our formula. Once again, because I just noticed a lot of you said times 2, please make sure your 2 is about half the size of the pi and the r, because it does not mean times 2, it means to square it, all right? What am I going to be using for pi? Okay, it says up here, use 22 over 7 for pi. So I am going to, right here, write in a equals, instead of pi, I'm going to put 22 over 7. Now, Zaria, do I know what my radius is? Mm -hmm. Yes, what is it? 7. 7. So I'm going to go ahead and put times 7, 
And what do I have to do to the 7? Square. You have to square it. Notice right here there's a square. So put that square. What does 7 squared mean? 7, seven times seven. 7 times itself, which means 7 times 7. So now what I want to tell you is anytime you have an exponent for PEMDAS, do you guys remember that? Yeah. P stands for the word parentheses. There is no work that I need to do inside of the parentheses. So now I'm going to go to E. Remember PEMDAS. E stands for what, guys? Exponents. Do I have exponents? Yeah. Yes, that little 2 is an exponent. A square is an exponent. So what I've got to do first is just rewrite A equals 22 over 7 times. Now let's do what 7 squared is. It means 7 times 7. Guys, what is 7 times 7? 49. 49. So I'm multiplying by 49. Now if you remember, I can put it over a 1. Do you remember that? Because 49 divided by 1 still means 49. And instead, what this helps me to see is I'm multiplying fractions together. So remember when multiplying fractions, we are going to first multiply the numerator. What is 22 times 49? Okay, fantastic. Instead of just multiplying across, I love the idea of cross-reducing. So instead, when we cross-reduce, what does the 7 and 49 become? A 1 and a 7. That just kind of takes away another step that we don't have to do later on. So now, guys, what is 22 times 7? 154. 154. Now, is there anything that I need to divide it by on the bottom? No, because I would just be dividing it by 1. So now the main thing you've got to remember is we've got to put units attached, and any time it asks for area, we have to square our units, okay? So what are my units, class? Centimeters. Centimeters squared. squared. Okay, so go ahead and put that in as your units. Now, another way that sometimes people like to write it, instead of centimeters squared, they might write it 154 square centimeters and that's fine also but this is what I don't want to see I don't want to see centimeters square that does not make sense if you're gonna do it that way you need to actually turn it into a tiny two okay so that's how I'm looking for your units to be attached let's go ahead and go to the next one problem B it tells me straight up I don't even have to figure out if this is radius or diameter I know that this is my radius radius equals six feet remember every single time we're gonna go ahead and start with our formula Everyone tell me, what is the formula for finding area of a circle? A, a equals... Pi r Repeat after me. Pi r, pi r squared. Everyone say it one more time. A equals... Pi r squared. All right, very good. Let me have Maddie help me. What do I need to do for my pi? Uh, put 22 over 7. A equals 22 over 7. And what's my r? 6 feet. Okay, 6 feet. And what do I have to do to my 6? Square it. Very good. Class, what does 6 squared mean? 6 times 2. Or 6 times 2. 6 times 6. Okay, make sure you don't say 6 times 2. So I've got to do my exponents first. So we bring down our 22 over 7. And what is 6 times 6? 36. 36. Now remember, I can put 36 over 1. Over 1. Very good job. Who would like to help me with this? Is there anything I can cross-reduce? No. no, there's not. So Kaylee, what should I do? All right, very good. So when you multiply those on top, you do get 792, and then you have to divide that by what? 7. 7. And what do you get? 113.142. Okay, now go back to our instructions. Has it asked us to round it at all? Yes. Yes. Round it to the nearest what? Tenth. Tenth. Kaylee, what would my answer be? Very good. And let's put our units there. What are the units, class? Feet. Feet, 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 feet. feet what? Squared. Remember, any time that I'm asking you for the area, you're going to go ahead and square the units because that's talking about all the space, not just the distance around. All right, moving on. We are still finding the area of the circle, but what am I using for pi this time? In the instructions, what am I using it for? 3.14, and then still we're going to be rounding to the nearest tenth. So, class, what has it given me, diameter or radius? Diameter. All right, let's go ahead and write that down. D equals 26 inches. When I am finding the area of a circle, remind me again, guys, what is the formula? Oh, A equals, a equals pi, pi r squared. Everyone say it. A, a equals pi r squared. Okay, do I need to know the diameter or the radius? 
diameter radius. I need to know the radius for the formula. A equals pi r squared. Kalani, what is the radius? We don't know it, but can I figure it out? What would it be? 13. 13. How'd you figure out it was 13? Because the radius is half of your diameter. That is correct. If you look up here, 26 inches is all the way across, but I don't need to know all the way across. I only want to know the radius, which is half of it. So half of 26 would be 13, okay? So that's something that I want you to start being able to figure out in your own head. A radius is gonna be half of whatever the diameter is. Now let's just go ahead and start plugging things in. Olivia, what am I gonna put for my pi? 3.14. Okay, very good. The instructions have asked us to put 3.14, or 3.14, and Elena, what is the radius? Um, the radius is, Was 13. 13, okay. Connor, what should I do to that 13? Oh, square it. Square, square it. it, very good. Now, according to PEMDAS, should I multiply these right here or should I do my exponents first? Exponents. We are going to do our exponents first. So I want you guys just to take your red pen and circle this, helping yourself to understand you must do the exponents before you multiply 3.14 times 13. <coughs> Joseph, what does 13 squared mean? Um, 13 times 13. That is correct. Guys, what is 13 times 13? All right, so we're going to be multiplying that times 13 squared, which is 169. All you have is one final step left, and that's to multiply those two things together. Aubrey, what do you get when you multiply 3.14 times 169? 500. Aubrey. 500. Very good. Now, it has asked us to round to the nearest tenth. Guys, which one is the tenths place? The, uh, last, the, last, the, the, first, the number after the point. The one right after the decimal point, okay? So then you've got to figure out if it bumps up or if it stays the same. What's going to happen to it? It bumps up. So what's the answer, guys? 530.7 what? Inches squared. Inches squared. Any questions for how we found that? All right, let's go to problem B. What is the formula, everyone tell it to me together, for finding the area of a circle? A equals pi r squared. Everyone say it together because we're still struggling. A, a equals, equals pi, pi r, r squared. squared. Do I want to know the radius or do I want to know the diameter? Radius. The radius. So, guys, it tells me D equals 28 feet. What is the radius? Uh, 14. How'd you figure out it was 14? It's half of whatever the diameter is. I want you and your partner to go ahead and do problem B together. All right, Christian, let's see what you guys came up with. What should I do? What am I going to plug in for pi? Very good. What's my radius? 14. And what do I have to do to the 14? Times it by 14. Okay, we're going to square it. What should I do first? Correct. We're going to do this square first. So what do you get for 14 times 14? Very good. So we're going to do 3.14 times 196. What do you get when you do that? Very good. And then we want to round to the nearest tenth. So what do you get? And what are my units? Feet squared is correct. How many of you, you would say you and your partner both got that together? Yes. All right, good job, guys. All right, for the next one, the shape is a little different. What shape are we dealing with now? A semicircle. Okay, so here's the difference. The formula is super similar. Remind me again, what was the formula for the area of a circle? Okay, now... What is the difference between a circle and a semicircle? It's a half. It's a half. Okay, so I have to divide my formula by two. two. Let me explain to you something that happened earlier. There were people who saw a two here and a two here, and they tried to cancel them out. A square 
and a two are not the same thing, which is why I was trying to help you not to say multiply it times two. It does not mean the same thing. So those cannot cancel out no matter what. You cannot try to cancel those out, okay? So still, I need to know the radius. For problem A, did it give me the diameter or the radius? Diameter. It gave me the diameter. So let's start off. Once again, tonight's homework, you're going to start it off just by saying D equals 30 feet. I don't want to know diameter. I want to know radius. Austin, what would the radius be? 30 feet. Remember, the diameter is this right here, the distance all the way across, but the radius is only half of that distance. So what's my radius? 15 feet. This is where people make a big mistake. A lot of times they forget to do this and they'll plug the diameter or whatever it is that's given to them here in the original problem and they'll plug that in. So please make sure you don't make that mistake. Always decide whether you've been given the diameter or the radius and try to figure out what it is that you need. All right, Tyra, what am I gonna use for pi? Okay, so she chose to use 3.14. Did the instructions tell me what I had to use? No. no. Let me give you a clue. If ever what you're going to be using, like this right here, if it's divisible by 7, doing 22 over 7 is a good idea. If it's not divisible by 7, so it's not like a 7, 14, 21, 35, 28, whatever it is, don't do the 22 over 7. Always use the 3.14. So good, good choice there, Tyra. So we're going to do A equals 3.14. Tyra, what's my radius? 15, and what do I have to do to that 15? Um, Not multiply it, but um, um, square it, okay? So put that little two there because if this is from my original formula, I have to put it down here and square the units. Now what do I need to do to that whole thing, class? It's a semicircle, so we're dividing it by two, okay? Everyone take out that red pen again, and no, we have to do our exponents first before we do anything else. Okay, according to PEMDAS, E exponents comes before multiplying or dividing. So always make sure you do your exponents first. What does 15 squared mean, class? 15 times 15. 15 times 15. What is 15 times 15? 225. 225. Divided by 2. Is there anything I can easily cross-reduce right now? Yes. No, there's really not. Okay, so instead what I'm going to do, multiply whatever you can in the numerator first before dividing it. Joseph, what is 3.14 times 225? All right, is there someone else who can help me? Guys, when you multiply that together, what would you get? 706.5. 706.5, and still I need to divide it by? Two. Two. Guys, what's my answer? 703.5. Okay, did it ask us to round to a certain number? No. no, which means you're going to give me the answer exactly as it is. So for problem B, class, just starting off, tonight if you had your homework, do you need to draw this picture? No. No, you do not have to draw the picture. You just have to tell me what information was given to you. Did it give you the radius or the diameter? Radius. It gave you the radius. Guys, what's the radius? All right, so that's what you're going to write down for your original problem. All right, so she started off with the formula for the area of a semicircle. A equals pi r squared divided by 2. Okay, what else are you going to do, Maddie? Um, for pi, I'm going to put 3.14. Okay, very good. And that's a good idea because this number right here is not divisible by 7, so we don't really want to use our 22 over 7. Okay, so she used 3.14, and now what? Okay. A equals 3.14 times 121 over 2. A equals 379.94 divided by 2, which comes out 189.97 feet squared. Good job. And should I round it? No. No. The instructions didn't ask us to round it, so we're just going to keep the answer exactly as it came out. Excellent work, Maddie. Any questions for her on how she did that one? No. All right. Good job. All right. So that's all we really need to know about finding area of a circle and a semicircle. In last week's lesson on 9.1, we talked about circumference of an object. 
Remember, we're always identifying whether we've been given the diameter or the radius. What have we been given here, guys? Diameter. We were given the diameter because remember, the diameter is all the way across. So what is my diameter? C equals... Nine centimeters. For the circumference, I was given two formulas, one for the radius and one for the diameter. Guys, what was the formula for circumference when knowing the diameter? C equals pi times D. C equals pi times D. Now, it says use 3.14 or 22 over 7 for pi. Guys, look at this right here. Is this divisible by 7? No. No. So we should probably just use the decimal. What's the decimal? 3.14. All right, so C equals 3.14 and multiply that times our diameter, which we know was 9. Go ahead and write the answer down. What you get, guys? 28.26. Okay, should I square my units? No. Why not? Because, no. area. because it doesn't ask me for the area. It's asking circumference, which is just the distance around. So I'm trying to figure out how far around that circle it is, okay? And because it didn't ask me to round it, I'm just going to keep my answer exactly as it comes out. All right, tonight's homework is this assignment right here. There are eight problems, and you guys now have about 10 minutes to work on that assignment.